ninth and tenth nerves are done together. They're the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. Now, there's not an awful lot you can do by the bedside, but you do need to check some important points. The biggest problem that we worry about in clinical practice is whether a patient can swallow safely or not, and this is important. So when you come to a patient and see they've got a nasogastric tube or a peg tube in, clearly there's a, a problem with swallow uh, in most instances now in the neurological world. So what we do for the 9 and 10, we take them together and we ask the patient to open their mouth as wide as they can and just tilt their head back a fraction and you shine a torch in to look at the palatal movements or palatal and you ask the patient to say a big ah, ah. and again ah. and you're looking for the movement, upward movement of the uvula and the symmetry of the upward movement of the palatal folds which are obviously normal here. And if a patient says, I've had odd, the odd choking episode, I'm not feeling great, or they've lost weight, you must test the gag response. And that again involves asking the patient to open their mouth wide, taking the tongue depressor and putting it right in. I'm not going to hurt Danica, but in essence, what people tend to shy away from is being as necessarily as aggressive as you have to be, which is going right back to the posterior pharyngeal wall to establish whether or not the gag is present or not. If you don't do that, the gag hasn't been done properly, in which case you can't make any good clinical decisions.